So, next, um, I don't talk much. Ili will talk about open street map things, editing. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some of my favorite things like OpenStreetMap and uh, editing it and OpenStreetMap future and a bit about MapsMe or a work. And uh, what is OpenStreetMap? I am really afraid to ask who knows about it because <laughs> in some audiences uh, just a couple of hands are raised and then I have to devote the whole talk to <laughs> explaining what it is. Uh, so then, it's a map that's defined by three, three traits. It's uh, a global map. Uh, it can be edited by anyone, and it's published under the open license. And these traits define everything that there is about OpenStreetMap. And uh, I think uh, most of you have uh, used uh, its data at some point and found it to be pretty good. Uh, it has roads <laughs> and some addresses and points of interest. Uh, and uh, what uh, I'm interested in, in uh, how all the data got there. So I'm going to talk a bit about how that map is made. Uh, there are some sources to map data. Uh, first of all, it's satellite imagery. So you just uh, fire up any desktop editor and start clicking on buildings and roads and uh, add that to OpenStreetMap. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, task. Uh, so you click on roads more and more, and then it's uh, 3 a.m. and you really have to go to sleep, but you've helped OpenStreetMap. And uh, I'd argue that in uh, uh, most populated places, uh, this task is uh, almost done, so a lot of buildings have been already traced, and uh, there are almost all roads. So you have to actually stand up from your chair and go outside and add uh, things that uh, are not on satellite imagery, like uh, addresses, like uh, uh, shops and restaurants and uh, signs and so on. So you get your camera and GPS device uh, it's 2016, uh, you get your smartphone and go outside and uh, make photos, record GPS traces. And uh, some more experienced users, they even pre print walking papers. Uh, it's uh, small pieces of map uh, on which you draw missing roads and uh, barriers and so on. And uh, by the end of the walk, you have a lot of photos, a trace and uh, filled in walking papers. Uh, and uh, you get to your computer and then uh, the interesting thing starts that uh, you copy all that to your computer, uh, upload GPS traces and scan working papers and then fire up desktop editor and uh, open up map features page to know which text to use and then start uh, editing uh, the map uh, finding features that you made photos of and so on. It's, uh, it's a very hard process and uh, uh, not many people are actually doing that. Uh, but uh, most consider that this is uh, the best way to edit OpenStreetMap because you get a lot of data. Yeah, uh, and uh, well, obviously it's not, uh, this process is not enough to get uh, the whole world on the map and a lot of places are, uh, still look like this, uh, just uh, roads and rivers traced from satellite imagery. So uh, we need uh, more people just mapping, just walking the, st the streets and adding uh, well, points of interest and addresses. And getting people is not uh, uh, is the task not only OpenStreetMap is interested in, because uh, b big companies have started uh, to understand that uh, using their own mappers, their own uh, car fleet is not enough to get a map of the world. So they also have turned to crowd mapping. And uh, I, I won't uh, call names, but some companies have already uh, added some uh, features to uh, their applications and started to incentivize mappers, uh, people to map, to contribute. And it works really well. So uh, basically, uh, OpenStreetMap loses pot potential mappers, and commercial companies uh, gain them. Uh, but uh, 
uh, we really, really need th these mappers. So how do we turn them? How do we explain that uh, OpenStreetMap is the project that uh, they need to participate in? Uh, so a bit to the past, uh, 2011, uh, three uh, developers from Belarus uh, got tired of uh, mapping applications, uh, always requiring internet to show maps. So they uh, took OpenStreetMap data, uh, downloaded it, uh, processed and made uh, an offline, uh, offline maps for iOS and Android and whatever. Uh, and uh, it was pretty good, it was fast, uh, it can do searching and bookmarks. So they looked at it, have seen that it's pretty good and decided that with uh, this app, they will rival Google Maps and Apple Maps. Uh, the app is called MapsMe. Uh, it, it wasn't called uh, this back then. Uh, so they took this uh, idea and went to investors <laughs> with it. Like uh, here we have an app, it has a thousand users, but we're pretty sure that it will be as popular as Google Maps. And investors didn't uh, uh, like the idea, <laughs> so they have had almost no money <laughs> for that, but they kept working. Uh, the applications uh, grew better and better and gained millions of users because it was fast and uh, uh, quite simple and it really worked <laughs> offline. Uh, yeah, it's, so it, it was bought by a big Russian company and uh, it uh, uh, turned out to be even better than before because now it's completely free and uh, it's got more features, more developers. Uh, yeah, so uh, first you, you should really try it. <laughs> uh, but then uh, the application is becoming more and more popular every day. So now it's got around uh, 50 million uh, installs and around 10 million monthly active users. So each month at least one person uses the map. And uh, uh, to go away from numbers a bit. This is how it looks like now. It's a desktop version. You can build it, uh, the, the code is uh, all open, so you can just uh, type make and see something on the screen. So it's got fancy 3D buildings and the points of interest and interesting style and so on. So yeah, regular uh, Maps application. Uh, yeah, and it, of course, uses the data only from OpenStreetMap. Everything you see, except some hotels which are taken from booking.com, uh, everything else is taken from OpenStreetMap. So basically, the, the company has built their business on uh, open data. And they thought that uh, it would be nice to contribute something back. And w what can could they contribute, well, besides code? Uh, well, it's pretty obvious. They could contribute uh, their user base. So in April, they added uh, an editor to the MapsMe. So uh, every one of these uh, 10 million users could just uh, click a button and uh, add points of interest like shop or cafe uh, to the map uh, or edit existing one like uh, adding open hours to it. It's got the best open R editor <laughs> in all OpenStreetMap applications. Uh, and, uh, well, we pushed this uh, change and uh, uh, we expected that a lot of people would check uh, the editor because the button is right there on the screen. Uh, and in the first months, we got 10,000 editors, which is maybe not much compared to Mail, but uh, uh, Considering OpenStreetMap uh, in the whole gets around 20 to 30 thousand editors a month, it's pretty noticeable. Yeah, some graphs. Uh, you can see that we almost doubled the uh, amount of new contributor per, per month, and uh, we're responsible for around 10,000 active contributors for some months. Well, it's pretty expectable. But interesting thing is uh, the spread 
of uh, mappers. Because with uh, classical desktop operators, you s can see that almost all active mappers uh, live in Europe and United States. You don't see any Asian country in this list. And in MapsMe, uh, we empower everyone, even from Asia and Africa, to uh, improve their map. You see there's Kazakhstan, India, Algeria, Iran, and so on. And the list goes on. So uh, we actually brought uh, opposite map editing to, to, to the whole world. And the map is better in that regard. Yeah, and we're slowly crawling to be the most popular editor. Not yet, uh, but uh, it's in the number of uh, users because in number of edits, of course, desktop editors are still better. Uh, and uh, many opposite map mappers uh, have noticed that not edits are uh, really uh, perfect. Uh, there are some issues, some of these we have already fixed, and some new were introduced, like duplicate uh, localized names. But uh, we're still working on it, so despite uh, uh, some uh, clumsy edits, uh, well, it works pretty well, and the maps get better. Some users really like to experiment with editing, like uh, uh, this one that added uh, power poles but map them as caravan sites. <laughs> it was very, very prominent on the map. Right, and maps me, uh, I think, uh, is just a uh, first step in uh, the process of changing the entire OpenStreetMap. Because uh, the thing is, uh, desktop editors will be in minority in time because uh, less and less people are actually buying laptops, buying desktop computers because uh, they don't need uh, them mostly because uh, uh, smartphones and tablets uh, have gotten pretty smart and uh, you have uh, movies on your TV set and uh, games on your console. So very few people feel the need to buy a desktop computer. So uh, to get people to map, you have to provide them with, uh, with applications for their smartphones. And Maps made the first, but I'm uh, pretty sure that uh, all other apps, well, uh, some other apps <laughs> will follow, and mapping will be done purely from apps. And this will allow uh, millions uh, of people to edit uh, the map. Not uh, thousands like now, but uh, nearly everyone could fire some application and uh, change uh, the map. I think eventually uh, uh, the millions of maps users will notice the editing button and change something. So, <laughs> yeah. And of course, they will map uh, not only points of interest and addresses. Uh, these are needed, but that's no, not all OpenStreetMap needs. They also map uh, parking spaces and signs and whatever else. So there will be a lot of applications and uh, users could uh, map everything. And with the help of computer vision, uh, neur neural networks and such, uh, which are being experimented on right now, uh, uh, the task of entering roads, of uh, tracing uh, satellite imagery will be offloaded to algorithm. algorithms, basically. So all that's left is to use the apps. And uh, millions of mappers means that uh, OpenStreetMap will stop equaling the community. Because uh, a lot of uh, uh, community members now uh, say that OpenStreetMap is the community. So you can lose the map and the community will restore it in a few months. But if you lose the community, then OpenStreetMap will cease to be. And uh, that uh, will simply stop being true because uh, the current community will become just the lead few of people who edit the OpenStreetMap. Uh, and uh, the majority of users uh, maybe won't even know they're editing OpenStreetMap, but they will bring, bring in uh, the most edits and the most uh, local knowledge and points of interest. And uh, <coughs> then uh, the OpenStreetMap editors will be split into a small community and a big number of people 
uh, the long tail <laughs> who edit the map. And to uh, deal with that, uh, the community, as it is now, will need professional tools. And right now in OpenStreetMap, we don't have any professional tools to uh, monitor the map, to clean it up, to uh, validate uh, edits. And we will have, or somebody, some commercial company maybe, <laughs> will have to uh, produce uh, these. Uh, for example, there is no way to revert some edits right now. There are, there are some attempts in, at creating tools, but they often fail and uh, uh, they work very uh, badly. And uh, you, you can't uh, uh, find any vandalism right now. You, for example, you can't find this th thing on the map. It uh, went on unnoticed uh, for three months. <laughs> so well, uh, validation tools uh, are virtually non-existent on OpenStreetMap, and we will need those. Yeah, and uh, with these, with these millions of mappers, OpenStreetMap will continue to be the best map, even despite commercial al alternatives uh, also gaining more mappers. Yeah, and well, the maps me is <laughs> leading in that case. Yeah, so that's pretty much. <laughs> All right. Hello. Um, as far as I understood, the mobile tool now supports adding points of interest data. But what about um, editing geometries? Are there any, any sites to that? Will, will we be having geometry editing mobile tools? Well, uh, as, as I said, uh, MapsMe has millions of users. So if we give them uh, complex uh, tools for 18 geometries, for 18 relations, then it's quite possible that uh, the map will be broken in just a couple of hours. So we decided to make 18 as simple as possible, so any edit can be easily reverted or and monitored. So we, we uh, decided to only add new points, just nodes, and to edit existing tags. And that's all. And just to continue from this, uh, what about sort of reporting tools for users of the maps me to uh, report the fault in the geometry? Yeah, uh, about reporting tools for users of maps me. Uh, there is a feature to add uh, OSM nodes on virtually any object, so you can report that uh, the road is badly drawn and so on. So, yeah, there, there are some. Then here was someone. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm an uh, everyday user of MapsMe, and that's probably the best uh, offline map application for OpenStreetMap for, for many years since I map, uh, maps with me times. But my question is uh, kind of. Uh, uh, tricky one. Um, some people don't use Google Maps because it's kind of scary American FBI related companies collecting your locations. So uh, uh, Maps Me is uh, not American one, so it's better in this sense, but on the other hand, uh, I don't know. Uh, how can you ensure that this location data that you collect is uh, really kept in a good place? Well, uh, first, uh, the source code is published on GitHub, so you can inspect it and check that we don't store coordinates anywhere. <laughs> and uh, it uh, uses... Uh, okay, there is a principal problem. We cannot verify that the binary is actually from the source code. So it's yeah. a very soft promise. <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't know. When uh, the topic is uh, computer security, then you can go very deep and <laughs> find something that's not okay for you. But. Uh, I work with the code, and uh, I haven't seen any reporting tools or collect location collecting features. So, well, it's pretty good, cool. and it works completely offline. So you can cut off all communications of your phone, and you will still get all the features of MapsMe, including Booking.com hotels and routing and everything. Well, maybe a solution could be that I can download it from GitHub and compile it myself, and then. Yeah, you can try. For example. <laughs> Thanks.
there was, uh, there was another one, just a short one. Yeah. Hi, thanks. It's uh, just a short question. When a user contributes with uh, an edit, which is the username of that edit on the OpenStreetMap? Right. Uh, every mapper that uses uh, MapsMe uh, does register with their own uh, account. So there are no pro proxy server. Uh, they all use the standard registration form of OpenStreetMap. So we brought like 50,000 new users to OpenStreetMap using the standard form. And of course, they have validated emails, so you can contact any of them when they make edits. You said you had a lack of uh, sponsors. Did you ever consider a crowdfunding like Kickstarter or, or Indiegogo for, for financial independence? Uh, lack of sponsors was an issue two years ago, but since then uh, we were bought by a big Russian company, so money is not an issue now. <laughs> <laughs> And the app didn't uh, become any worse. Uh, it still ha has no ads, n no promotional things, so it's still as good as it was. So I guess the question is, what's the business model of the company, or where does the money come in, or how, do you, how does all that work in relation to this? Uh, regarding business model, uh, if you're a user of MapsMe, you, you might have noticed that some month ago, uh, it's got uh, Booking.com hotels on it. And this was some controversy regarding mixing it with OpenStreetMap data. But basically, uh, you can now uh, search a database of uh, 900,000 booking.com hotels completely offline and see the rating and price rate. Uh, and when you book a hotel from the application, we get a small uh, affiliate fee from that. So this is the start of our business model, but of course there will be more integration with other services like Uber and restaurant things. So. One still. No, I I just think uh, it it would be good if uh, uh, the MapsMe have some editing recommending system. So uh, if you have some any plan for recommending system for editor. I, I didn't quite get the question, uh, what uh, should we get? When I use uh, Google Street Map, uh, they always recommend uh, some, uh, they always need some information uh, for me, to me, mm. uh, about the make uh, some information for POI. Well, uh, I didn't quite get so I will try to answer two questions that I think one of these is asked. So at first, uh, MapsMe has bookmarks, so you can uh, leave some information for yourself, like where you're staying or where you're going. And uh, if the question was about uh, asking users to edit the map, uh, then this feature is uh, in the work. So in some months, I think, uh, it will ask users, like, is uh, that shop still there? Or can you please type in open hours of it? So it will incentivize users to, uh, to, ma to map, <laughs> to the map. Thank you for the presentation. Mm -hmm. Are you doing anything to improve the road network, um, uh, like turn, collecting turn prohibition or anything to improve the navigability of the road network uh, or signage? Or do you anticipate to ask your end user to edit some sign? Uh, not right now. Editing signs is not currently in our near plans. 
but we may uh, partner with uh, some other companies doing that, like Mapzen or Mapbox, and provide them with uh, uh, information for improving uh, roads and maybe finding signs. But I, I'm not sure now. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Thanks, everyone. We are changing to next. Presentation.